Hello and welcome to the New Jersey Shade Tree Federation Get to Know the Board Members series. And we have three board members here tonight. Um, and we're doing this series so that you get to know different members in the board just to see that there are people from different parts of the industry, different parts of communities. And tonight is kind of community night. We have three members who are more community based and um, small business and just have a community background. So Pam, do you wanna introduce our three guests tonight? Well, sure, we have Robin Potter, uh, and then we have the two Georges, George and, and the other George. So we have George Sweeten and George Meglio. And um, we would love you guys to just give a quick introduction of yourselves. And um, just so we keep the Georges together for confusion's sake, Robin, why don't you go first? Okay, good. Um, I live in Haddonfield, New Jersey, which is, uh, a small town, we've got about 11,000 people, men, woman, and child in our town. Uh, we are near Philadelphia. Uh, for those of you from the North, it's near Cherry Hill. Um, the, I've, um, I'm here because I'm a member of the Haddonfield Shade Tree Commission. I've been the chair of the Shade Tree Commission for about 10 years, but I've on, been on the commission for about 15 total. Um, my background actually is not originally in, in trees or gardens or plants or anything. I spent my business uh, career in the computer industry. Um, I was in sales, I was in marketing. I started and I built a medium-sized software, business software and consulting firm uh, before I saw the right, the right way to go and I retired and started learning about plants. Um, I got some training. I went to the Barnes Foundation uh, certification course, which was really just the start. I became a master gardener. Um, and then I started taking courses and classes in part courtesy of the CEU requirement associated with being a Shade Tree Commission member. Um, and that really, and you know, so I, I actually learned from that and it really spurred me to take more courses because trees were really a, very much of an interest. As I said, I've been on the Shade Tree Commission now, actually 15 years. Um, I do other work for no pay, as uh, Neil said in his prior interview. Um, I chair the Pennsylvania Horticulture Society because I am just across the river from uh, Philadelphia. And we're the people who just finished uh, the Philadelphia Flower Show, first time in 190 years. We were outside in a park with amazing trees that had been planted over a hundred years ago. It was really stunning. Um, and so uh, I started there as a volunteer, just as I uh, started and continue with the Shade Tree Commission as a volunteer. Um, and just sort of one, I, I'm sure Pam will be asking, but we're really proud of our Shade Tree Commission. We do all kinds of things in terms of education. Uh, we've got a volunteer group, the branch managers, um, that does uh, street level pruning, training pruning for our trees. And we have just finished putting in place and are working um, successfully with a construction and trees program that uh, not only helps our trees during all of this big construction boom and the last one, quite honestly, um, but also helps fund some of our tree planting through an escrow fund that we run associated with, uh, with the impact of construction on trees. So that's, that's a, in a nutshell, pieces of what I do. That's amazing, Robin. Thank you for sharing all that. I love the branch management. I love that. Actually, there's a, tagline, there's a tagline to that. It, it's the Haddonfield branch managers where everyone is a first vice president. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> all right. Um, which George wants to go next? Um, uh, George Megley, I guess I'll go first. If that's Great. okay. Yeah. Good, good. So my name is George Megaleo. I live up in Wood Ridge, New Jersey, in Bergen County. You know, I've come to realize that New Jersey has a lot of wood and ridges in their towns. Uh, I guess back in the 1800s, they were a little short on uh, on names and such. So, um, but I'm up here for, uh, well, I was born and raised in North Jersey. Um, Mayor Sarlo, 21 years ago, asked me to, uh, if I'd volunteer on the Shade Tree Commission. And I said, sure. He says, oh, you know, it's like, you know, maybe an hour a month or something, you know, not a big deal. And I said, oh, okay, fine. You know, of course we all know that's not the case. Right. And, um, but you know, it's been, a, it's been a really great journey. Um, 
you know, I, I, I don't share the formal education that you all have, which I'm always impressed by. And um, I am, uh, I'm a backyard gardener with a great love for trees and, and, and plants. Um, I live in a community that's very dense, you know, in, in Bergen County, as you would expect. And, um, you know, sidewalks and tree conflicts are an everyday battle. Uh, contractors, uh, new homes that are being built, you know, uh, every year they're knocking down a, a small 1200 square foot cape and building a, you know, a 3000 square foot home. And uh, so that's what we're faced with here. And, um, you know, not, I've come to realize that people uh, love trees or not. <laughs> There's no in between, uh, which is pretty amazing. And, um, you know, regardless of how much you try to uh, teach everyone about the benefits of trees. Um, it's just a, a love hate re love hate relationship. Um, so I, I've been the shade tree chairman now. This is my twenty first year, and um, I will tell you that I've got most of my formal education through my relationships with all of you, and and you know the years of going to the uh, shade tree meetings and such, and uh, you know people like Paul Cowie and and Downs Tree Service have been great you know, great aids to my education and support in a town of our size. We're, we're about 7,000 people, one square mile. Um, in my, in my business life, I am a, uh, an engineer, I'm a television and, uh, engineer. I do communications work and I've been doing that for about 40 years. So, um, that was my, that's my formal training and very, very far re removed from plants and trees. I can tell you that. And, uh, and that's what I do. You know, try to keep people happy. I've been very good at uh, at, at you know keeping the uh, the residents um, happy with you know the complaints. It it, it taught, taught me a lot about uh, people skills and, and dealing with trees and people. I can tell you that. Yeah, thanks, George. That's great. We're all we're we're all really happy that you got hoodwinked into uh, working for your shade tree program in your town, and then yeah, uh, and then with us too. George you. Sweeten, you're up. Okay. Uh, I'm George Sweeten. My nickname's Homer. Uh, most, most people, it was just a matter of, uh, I'm also a volunteer fireman. There was five Georges and uh, uh, it was from a barber shop that they called me a Homer and it stuck with me for the last 30 some odd years. So <laughs> people that know me call me Homer. People that don't know me, they call me George. Um, <laughs> I live in a town in the great in the great state of New Jersey called Chatham, in the great uh, county of Mars. Uh, it's a small town. I consider it a small town. Uh, I've been doing uh, this type of work ever since I was knee high to a grasshopper. Uh, learned everything at my my parents' place because uh, you didn't go out until the yard work was done. And for forty three years, I was a self employed landscaper. Uh, designer, installer, whatever, you know, everything that goes with it. Um, I'm also, like I said, I'm a volunteer fireman with 30 plus years. And uh, I just enjoy my work. Uh, enjoy it. It's not a job, it's a career. Um, you, uh, you get to educate people on, you know, what they, you know, what I do best and what, you know, showing them a part of what, sharing the part of the enthusiasm of being outside uh, is great. Um, I've taken a gazillion courses down at Rutgers uh, and at County College of Mars, uh, also through uh, Steve Chisholm and Ted Zinsky. Uh, it's been just enjoyable. Uh, I now work with uh, uh, as a contractor with JCPNL as a uh, I make tree assessments along the power lines. Uh, and, you know, it's, 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 it's great to, you know, to be, you know, proactive instead of reactive because, you know, you get the, the negative pitches. Why don't you do this? Well, it has, we all work together and uh, we try to do the maintenance to get, you know, prevent those, but a tree that's 60 feet back and still fall on the lines that we do the best. Um, that's about it. Married, you know, two kids, you know, just living life like a dream, you know? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Great. Thanks, George. You're welcome. <laughs> Liz, do you have 
have a question? Sure, I'll ask the first question. And this, I just love listening to this intro because we've gone through, you know, we have some professors on the board, we have industry people, we have arborists, we have landscape um, people. And then this group too, it's just the community feel. It's like such a great thing pulling everyone together. And our board meetings are definitely interesting and have so much discussion because of it. So thank you for joining. The first question kind of involves that is, you all came on as new members. This group are the new members to the board. And we're curious to hear what you thought, you know, what happens is a board, someone gets nominated to be on the board. Um, Robin, I think actually you sought it out, which people don't know that you can seek out this because you wanted to be involved so much. Um, and I, we'd just like to hear a little bit about how you think, how you kind of thought about being on the board before you were on it, and then how you feel about being on it once you're now involved. And maybe Robin, we'll start with you first again. Oh no, <laughs> okay. Um, actually, the reason I knew about the board was that um, Carrie, I think it was, had mentioned it at one point, maybe two years ago, that you guys might be looking for board people. So I sort of stuck that in the back of my mind and thought that might be interesting. And that's actually, and then I, and actually I, our town works with Paul Cowie for our annual plans. And so I was asking Paul about it because Paul's on the board also. So I sort of, I guess I sort of segued my, my way into it. Um, but the fact is that uh, I guess maybe five, six, seven years ago, I was actually on some other committee with Pam, which is how I got to know Pam. So I, I found it interesting having a broader view than just my town. And actually, one of the things that I'm finding very cool is I've just learned a tremendous amount from my fellow board members, because everybody does, as you said, Liz, everybody does have very different backgrounds. I mean, we've got uh, Neil, who just retired from Bartlett's, and, you know, and we've got we've got you who's, who's done cool things on, with her, with your shade tree commission. I mean, leaving aside the uh, LTE designation, but you know, you do cool stuff with your commission. And um, I have to tell you, I've been hearing the name of Woodward for a while in terms of all the cool stuff they do. So one of the things I guess that I had hoped for and I'm finding to be the case is it's just a great way to learn more, to meet people that are doing really interesting tree related things. And also um, it's, it lets me take home some other things that we could think about back in our little town. So uh, I guess it's, it's been, it's being, since this is really only two meetings that we've had thus far, it's being what I'd hoped, which is an interesting thing. Um, and uh, if nothing else, I know I'm gonna be really busy in the October meeting. <laughs> They won't just be sitting in and learning. Great. Well, we're glad to have you. It's, well, thank been, you. it's been great. George Meglio. Well, I think, you know, obviously I, I know all you for, for many years now through the, the meetings and, and uh, listen, I'm always in, impressed with, with well-educated, well-informed people like yourselves. And, and uh, you know, so it's easy to want to hang out with all of you. And, um, you know, I think, I think part of what got me involved you know, at this level was uh, one of the one of the bills that was uh, going through our legislature for running, you know, about the, uh, the utility trees and and such. And, and um, you know, I'm a little involved in the political end of, of New Jersey and uh, hopefully was able to lend a little bit of interference in that bill being passed. And uh, and I don't know if that was the case or not, but that was my intention. And then from there, I think our relationships grew at that point, and, and hopefully, I can continue to help in that that front. Um, and and listen, I, you know, I got to tell you, I, I'm always, you know, New Jersey. Although we've got a lot of trees, I mean, it's a state, and people come to visit. And I I I, I often, except for last year, entertain a lot of out of country visitors being in this television electronics business I'm in, and they're always impressed by the amount of trees that New Jersey has. And I'm like, wow, we had no idea, you know, because New Jersey certainly has a very not a great reputation around the world, right? You know, and then they come here and go, wow, this place is pretty nice after all. It's like, mm, yeah, okay, great. You know, and so you get used to that after a while, but you know, it, it, it's just nice to be with people that generally care about, you know, their industry and their business. And, and you know, you guys are all excited about making the world we live in a better place. And listen, we can always use more of that, so. Great, and Homer. Now that we're on first name, <laughs> now that we know you a little better. 
<laughs> I'm glad you know called me Homer. <laughs> well, I was uh, nominated, or actually, uh, uh, a gentleman, uh, Rich Wallowitz, um, he asked me if I would uh, get on the board. And uh, you can't refuse something like that. Uh, it's just, you know, I my education tells me that if you're uh, a part of something and you're your work, you're, you should be, you know, being one that, with a positive thought and saying, hey, this is what I do. Let somebody benefit from whatever knowledge I give them. Uh, and it's, uh, it's just, you, you know, uh, it's just one of those things. Uh, I forgot to mention that I'm also on the Chatham Boer uh, Shade Tree Commission. Uh, I actually, the only one on the commission that is a licensed arborist, uh, and it's a bunch of, you know, the questions are, what if, what's this, what's that? And uh, I find it fascinating that, you know, and I figure that we are all educated tree huggers and uh, they're really interested in what, what they were saying. And sometimes they have no idea what they're talking about until you explain it. And, you know, you can walk out and say, hey, I, you know, gave that guy a two cents worth of information that just made his day. So, uh that's everything. And I can't thank Rich enough for uh, putting my name in the hat. And I was, I was impressed that it was picked and, and said, sure. <laughs> yeah. It's great that you guys all, I love it. Cause like, we're all like that too, but you're all volunteering already and putting so much of your heart and soul into your community. And then you come onto a state group and give more of your time and you're happy to do it. Like, you're like, thank you for letting me do this. And it's, it's great. It's just great. Well, yeah, amazing. Okay. Well, knowing Pam, it's like you have to. Yeah, you, do. <laughs> you don't have a choice. You just got to. <laughs> yeah. Well, as Liz said, we're certainly happy that you guys have joined us and really looking forward to, uh, to working together on this conference coming up. And um, I guess we're ready for the next question. Yeah. And so I like the question, what is your biggest tree pet peeve? You don't have to end short answers. <laughs> yeah, short we answers go, here. We could do okay. like all night. And you want to go? You want to go in order, still? <laughs> sure. If you got one, George, I think you can jump in. Well, listen. I, you know, I was. I, I think I was. You know, some people say lucky. Uh, timing was right. I, I happened to uh, not knowing much about trees in 1999. I, you know, went and met. Uh, I vote at, at PSC and he is now retired and he gave me this little booklet and it said, uh, you know, uh, trees empower utility lines, right? Plant the right tree in the right spot. Now, 21 years ago, that was like foreign to, I think, many people, right? Maybe not this group, but, and I was like, all right, that sounds great, you know, and and I can tell you, if you come to visit Woodridge, we, we have absolutely replanted under utility wires. And that was my biggest pet peeve because listen, losing power, uh, you know, uh, life safety issues. I mean, these are important issues, especially in a town this dense. Um, so that was always my thing about, you know, planting in the right spot. And, and you know, still to this day, there are some trees that are left, you know, uh, Bergen, the, the, one of the county roads, they planted, you know, oak trees for a mile and a half from Karlstadt to Hasbro Heights, they planted oak trees, you know. And these were these were probably people who knew about trees back then, you know. And of course, then twenty years later, when they're you know sixty foot high and they come chopping them in half, so that always killed me. The the being out of utility wires is my pet peeve. Like, you know, just take the tree down. It's like, yeah, okay, I get it. It's not bad for the tree, but you know what? It's bad for me visually. <laughs> so just take it down and replant it. And that's that's my pet peeve. That's the one that gets me the the, the most. All right, that's a good one. Who's next? All right, Robin. Okay, mulch, too much mulch. I figure I'd get that one in before George, before Homer said it. <laughs> <laughs> it's really Go hard. For it. I mean, everybody, let's put it this way, we all know it. And with the, actually it's been interesting because with the volunteer group, with the branch managers, we not only worry about the pruning, but we, if there's ivy growing up the trees, which is, I guess, another pet peeve, not as big as mulch, but it's there. Um, but we also remove ivy and we talk to the homeowners who over mulch. And 
I used to say, oh, it's the landscapers, they do it because. And then I discovered that it's not just the landscapers because the homeowners look at what the <laughs> landscapers do and think that that's the right thing. And so it's this ongoing education process that some people get and some people really don't because they, they've become accustomed to what it looks like, that whole over mulching thing. Not quite mulch volcanoes. Actually, at this point, it's more like mulch mountains that you know, sort of cover the base, you know, the top, you know, on a nice flat number, they basically cover the top of the, the base of the tree completely. So that's fine. I'm sorry, George, I spooked you on it. No, no it's all you, man. It's cool. Um, that, every one of those pet peeves, uh, you, the list would go on and on. I think it starts with, you know, the education of the person planting. Uh, and that's what starts. The wrong tree under the wires is absolutely, I mean, it's intolerable. And I don't, I'd like to push for like, if I had to do anything, it would be pushing for an ordinance or a regulation. We have plumbing inspectors, we have electrical inspectors. You know, here's something for, you know, we plant an oak underneath the wires. I mean, it's not, uh, it does, it's, you know, it's, easy enough to understand that that tree grows to, you know, 80, 90 feet. And yet they plant it with a big smile in their hand and say, I'm not going to be here in 20 years. Well, you know, it's like anything else. It's cultural practices where it begins. And that goes from planting the wrong tree to over mulching to, you know, you know, planting it too deep. Uh, those are, you know, my pet peeves. And there's, and it's very simple to be avoided. And, and, you know, it starts with the first shovelful, if you want to call it that way. You know, at this end of the shovel, everybody thinks they know everything. But, you know, realistically, it doesn't, you know, I know what I'm good to do for. Let us do what we know how to do and let the, you know, the, you know, I'd rather educate an amateur than, you know, try and tell somebody that's 20 years old that tree shouldn't have been planted to begin with. So, and they do it again and again and again. Yeah, so. yeah. I think, you know, we've, we keep hearing it over and over and I think those are some of my pet peeves also. Maybe this is the year and Pam, maybe this is for your presidency next year. Maybe we should tackle these things and really tackle, you know, like get together and tackle them. It would be great to really spread that word statewide. Good idea to have yeah. like a, a collect up all the pet peeves that we've. Yeah, it's our next series. We'll do like a <laughs> Public yeah. education. Um, so the next question is a two-parter. It'll probably be the last question. I think we should um, do last question. I'll start. I'll do the um, the first part of the question is kind of easy, I think. What is your favorite tree? So um, Homer, why don't we start with you? Um, the list goes on and on. Yeah. Uh, for every tree uh, that I like, there's a site for it. You know, I love the Stewardia. I love the Japanese uh, uh, paper bark maple, uh, you name it. You know, you got the yellow woods. You've got they're all good trees, and it's just a matter of what you're looking at and what fits where. And you know, it gets the excitement going from whatever you know uh, the background or the location. Um, my favorite tree, geez, that's a tough one. Uh, I, I I would say probably 680 of them, but <laughs> that would be a little too many. <laughs> So uh, I'll go, uh, I'll go with the Stewardia. Okay. We've had a few Stewardias actually. Yeah, that's a popular that's, one. Yeah, that's interesting actually. Yeah. Um, George Meglio, what's your favorite tree? Um, the Sidious trees, uh, you know, I was, I was lucky and I, I planted about 15 American elms that I, I purchased out of Atlanta. We had Chinese elms in town, which of course all, all, all came to their demise over time. So when they had that new breed of elms, I, I said, well, you know what? I'd like to see that again. So now we have them and they're about 20 years old and they're absolutely beautiful. So I would say the American elm is, you know, that hybrid tree is now my, some kind of my favorite. And then the evergreen, the Vanderwolf pine is my number one favorite tree because it kind of has personality, you know, and uh, so that would be my two, two favorites on both sides of that. Nice. And Robin, what's your favorite tree? I have two trees. Uh, my favorite, favorite tree, which 
is a street tree only in the right place is the uh, burr oak, the Quercus oh. macrocarpa. I love that tree. I mean, it's beautiful. It's got, it's just such a strong tree. It's really, it's wonderful. And I was lucky actually, the house I live in is old and the house next to mine is also old. And somebody about a hundred plus years ago planted one of them on their property right next to my house. So I get to enjoy it. So I'm excited about that. The other tree, and I'll, I'll tell you, cause I, I just, I actually go and visit this tree once a year that my friend has. It's an American hop hornbeam. Mm. And I oh. just love the way the seeds just sort of, they sort of chain down like hops and they're just, it's just super cool. So Making I'm your own beer. Pardon? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Making your own beer. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> or very frothy or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, All right. Great, great choices. Yes. And Robin, you, you segued us really well into the part two of the question. Do you, tell us about an individual tree, oh. like your favorite individual, like a tree that you love, well, that you I know. Tried, and, I already I know. did. So I'll give you my, and I'll give you a group of trees I really love. Um, which is the American beech. Um, down in Maryland, and I know this, we're all from New Jersey, but down in Maryland, around the Chesapeake, the beech is one of the standard forest trees. And in the winter, when you look at it, the leaves that are low to, low to the ground, the top maybe 10 feet, 12 feet, hang on the tree branches, and then they turn gold. And so you can look through a beech woods and you just see gold. It's amazing. And it flutters in the breeze. So, you know, I gave you one before. I'll give you a lot now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. I like that, that uh, beach forest look too. So George's, an individual tree that you know and love. Uh, well, this, this is the uh, first George. Um, Probably Japanese red maple, I think. Um, I was lucky enough to travel to Korea on business. I've been a couple of times and uh, I happened to visit their 150 year old Japanese red maple. And I think that then became my favorite tree at that point. Cool. Very cool. All uh, right, George. It, it, came in a, it came in as a tie. It was either Metasequoia glyphosobite <laughs> or the uh, uh, Southern Magnolia. I love the blossoms. I love the smell. I love, you know, where the fragrance where you can clip something and bring it inside and enjoy that can of pledge that you spilt all over. It's just awesome. <laughs> uh, but I love them both, you know, one for the color in the fall, one, in, you know, for the spring. Uh, like I said, I have like 680 different trees that I love. So it's great. <laughs> cool. Everything. Yeah. That's like the best thing about trees. Like they provide us with so much, but then this emotional experience, we get so emotional over these trees that we've met. So yeah. Yeah. that's why we do this. Yeah. So well, true. Thank you so much for joining us. We know how busy we have two Georges in their cars joining us and I'm sure Robin had a busy day. So thank you for taking time out. And um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your rookie year on the Shade Tree Federation because we really enjoy having you all and your, your input is so important. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you all for the work you're doing and thank you for doing this with us tonight. And we'll see you at the conference. Absolutely. At the conference. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Have a good you. night. Bye. Take care.